A simple domestic solar hot water system may be automated with a basic differential controller, a storage tank, a power supply, and a set of temperature sensors. Our solar collector training fixture may be used to test the performance of two collectors, so it has two storage tanks, two pumps, two different collectors, two differential controllers, two sets of temperature sensors, a six position temperature monitor, and a method of sensing the intensity of sunlight. Uh, tanks that uh, we're going to fill up about halfway to pump water through our collectors. And you can see that there's a pump already installed on it. So this is tank, tank number two, and this will pump water to collector number two, which is a modified trickle-down collector. Uh, this is tank number one, and this will be used to pump water through our serpentine collector. And to integrate the electronics needed for collector comparison, we'll use an electronics board so we may control and monitor the heat harvest from one location. All right, you'll notice there's a lot of wires coming out of this electronics board. Looks a little confusing, so let's first deal with that. Um, coming out of the side, we have four wires. Uh, two are gray and two are white. The white wires will go to the collector. Okay, so we'll put those up here for now. And the gray wires will go to the tanks, the storage tanks and the pumps, the, the terminals. Now, these are the cables, and inside these cables there's uh, a number of wires. Some will uh, are wired to the controllers, uh, so they'll sense the temperature and also regulate the pumps, and some are uh, connected to the relay in the controller. That's this, uh, the red and green wires, and they, they'll go directly to the pump. The other uh, cable, this is an LM34, uh, the other, uh, this, is the, this is a sensor that will convert the uh, temperature directly into voltage. And that will appear over here on this six position monitor right here. Okay, uh, it's a lot of things, uh, a lot of things going on, a little confusing. So let's just do one thing at a time. First thing we want to do is, is put these gray wires where they belong. So we'll snake these wires through the hole that says gray. All right, so once we get it lined up, I want to get the screw in the right hole and the right slot and everything. Okay, there's one. Now there's this one here. Hey, I got it. I line up. Nice. All right. Okay, so we've mounted our electronics board. Anyway, the photovoltaic panel is going to be mounted right here. And you'll notice there's, there's some slots uh, that will uh, guide the panel into position. Right now it's locked into position. Okay, <coughs> very good. We've mounted our photovoltaic panel. Uh, the next wires we want to install will be the gray wires. And these gray wires will attach uh, to our pump terminals, right? This is our pump right down here. So let's set that up. Okay, we'll start with our short gray cable. That's this cable here. And we'll connect that to our tank number one terminals. Now notice there's uh, three groups of wires here. Uh, this large bundle here, this uh, goes to a LM30, this is a LM34 sensor, and this goes to the six position uh, temperature monitor. So we want to monitor the temperature from this tank. So we'll slide this probe right in here, and this is pressing against the side of the tank. So that'll give us the temperature of the water right near the pump, and that's where we want to monitor temperature. Okay, so that's in position. The next thing we want to do, now this is another sensor. 
this uh, this terminal is connected here and this this sensor is also pressing against the tank and this is a thermistor probe and this goes to our differential controller okay one of our differential controllers anyway okay so let's let's install this next there's just two white wires so they go right in here let's tighten that up I'm going to tighten it up before you install the next set otherwise it'll just slide right out of there <laughs> okay alright so our thermistor sensor is connected now last but not least we have the pump connections <laughs> we have to connect that otherwise you won't be getting anything uh, so you might want to use needle nose pliers to make some of these connections make sure the uh, the power is off when you're doing this you don't want to short these out we have the green wire and the red wire the green wire goes to the negative terminal and the red wire goes to the positive terminal and you'll see a little plus sign right next to the red wire so you'll know that that goes in there remember the red always goes to the positive terminal and do not reverse polarities that's not a good thing to do you want to keep that straight that's the most important thing to remember okay we've installed the wires from the gray cable to tank uh, number one that's the short cable remember and you'll also install the uh, gray cable to tank number two when you finish that okay uh, so now um, we've also installed uh, these wires there's two uh, cables up here and this is the power uh, board so this is where the pumps get their power now you can select where you want to get the power uh, from these two switches here and this is the uh, the battery switch bat uh, so you'll see the the cable is marked bat and this is the PV power switch right here and when you flip that switch up it'll connect the PV panel now you can use either the PV panel or the battery panel or you could use both now we haven't connected the battery cable to the battery yet but we're going to uh, do that next okay uh, this is our battery down here uh, just underneath our electronics board and you'll notice there's two wires a white wire and a red wire and remember the red wire always goes to the positive terminal so uh, we're going to connect this red wire to this positive terminal you can see a little plus sign on the, the battery itself so you'll know where that's connected okay uh, that's easy enough all right so we've connected our PV panel uh, we have all our other connections uh, this little thing here this is uh, going to be used to monitor uh, the amount of uh, solar energy that's available or solar flux and uh, when you uh, change this six position monitor to position four uh, that will give you an indication of of how much uh, how much sunlight is available all right now what next this is the top part of the serpentine collector you can see the little wooden dowel on the top so you'll know this is the top all right so we're going to mount it like this Put it up there on your test fixer. It doesn't have to be in the slots just yet. You have to wire it up to the, the cable. This is our serpentine collector cable. This one. You can see what it looks like. And if you examine it closely, you'll see a single line on it. So that's collector number one. And sir, this is the uh, sensor that goes to the serpentine collector. Remember this is a serpentine collector or collector number one. Uh, looks like this. So we're going to attach it right here. Uh, this is the this is a union uh, connector that's connected directly to the copper pipe that's inside here. So it's going to connect conduct heat to the outside. Uh, so when the collector gets hot this will get hot. Uh, in less than a minute it'll get it, because it's such a good conductor you know that copper is a good conductor some people put their probes inside the collector but uh, that gets uh, that gets a little complicated sometimes 
so we're not going to bother. Th this works great. Okay, so uh, this uh, type of sensor, this is actually, there are actually two sensors in here. And one is used to monitor the actual temperature inside the collector, and the other one is a thermistor, changes resistance with temperature, and that goes to the uh, differential controller, uh, something I call a PV controller, two different kinds of controllers. Um, doing this uh, it might sound a little complicated at times, but uh, I'm giving you a lot of uh, information so uh, you get exposure to a lot of things, different ways of connecting things, different kinds of collectors, and so on. So the first thing you'll do, you're going to put the tape, get it started, and you put it right on here, and you just tape that down right on the right on that uh, union nut, <laughs> a union nut. That's good. So you get it nice and tight. But uh, leave a little tab of this tape exposed so you can get it off later so the next people can can use this. If you put this on too tight, you're going to have a hard time getting it off. Anyway, that, that should hold it fine. All right, this is the back of our MTD collector, and this is where we'll be taking a reading of our temperature. Uh, we, remember, this probe uh, contains the LM34 and also a thermistor. The LM34 will sense, we, we'll be able to monitor the temperature of our collector with the LM34, and the uh, thermistor will go to our controller. So that will uh, trigger the, uh, the pump when the differential temperature is appropriate. Anyway, um, so this is our probe, and this is where we want to attach it. Uh, this is a kind of an odd collector. This is a very unusual thing, but I want you to be aware that there are all kinds of different uh, things out there, and you should try to understand why we're placing the probes in different places, okay? Uh, if you understand the basic uh, heat theory, you can do that. Okay, so we want to hold that pr probe in place. We put it in, and you'll notice that there's some lines uh, right on this support. Line up, line up the lines and screw it in. And that's, that's all there is to this installation. One, two. Okay, so we've connected our MTD probe. Now all we have to do is flip uh, our collectors over and install the plumbing. That's next.